Uh, Hello. These final months of the Obama administration, let me say it because it is music to my ear, if no one else's, and I know it is to a lot. The final month of the Obama administration is upon us. Liz, what is this nonsense about? 30 days to go. Be, you know, rejoice. Uh, I think Obama is come face to face with the fact that his environmental legacy is going to be basically blown to dust by the uh, incoming administration. And so he's running around like the Energizer buddy, Bunny, putting all the kinds of new rules in place, uh, including the, the Stream Act, about which basically takes off or, or hits uh, strip mining in Appalachia, one of the right. poorest regions of the country. But this other thing, the banning of offshore drilling, is really a very bad idea because it's a permanent issue. Uh, he wants to make these permanent, these lands hundreds of millions of acres permanently out of reach for the oil industry. And what Americans need to know is that a good deal of our future reserves are going to be found offshore, particularly Atlantic coast and also our, uh, in the Arctic. So it's an incredibly costly decision to make. Yeah, if it were upheld, Steve, I, this looks to be easily within the, uh, yeah. the purview. Oh, uh, it's gone. It's gone. That okay. that ruling is gone. Uh, maybe the second day that Donald Trump is in office, because you know, tr uh, I'm certain Obama is fellow Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, Obama's issued. He's think about this, uh, guys. I mean, how many laws ha have gone through Congress and been signed into law by? Barack Obama in the last four years, maybe six, not many. Mm. Almost everything he has done with the stroke of a pen. Guess what? If that's how you govern, the next president can come in and with the stroke of a pen, just completely, I agree with Liz, just completely obliterate that agenda. Mm. And by the way, Liz, you're right about the outer continental shelf, but there's also millions of acres onshore, you know, right. on public lands that have been, that are even easier to get to, that are, I'm not talking about Yosemite or Yellowstone mm. National Park, not environmentally sensitive lands up in places like Alaska and the Great planes that have been taken out of circulation and we have well, literally trillions of dollars Lou of oil and gas there that could be gotten at and uh, and the president-elect has made it clear that this is going to be an independent uh, energy independent nation you got it. and uh, and now if he can just fix this uh, debtor nation in perpetuity uh, we'll we'll have it all. Uh, in well, our think hands. about this, Lou. Related to that, you know, there's 50 trillion. I didn't say 50 billion. 50 trillion do dollars worth of oil and gas underneath federal lands. Right. Now, the royalties. Think about this. Just the royalties the federal government could could collect from the oil and gas companies mm -hmm. and the, and the fees to to drill there. <coughs> probably, you're talking about three or four trillion dollars that could then be used well, to we... reduce our deficit and and retire our debt. And a lot of jobs, by the way. Way, you got in it. terms you of bet, developing right. those yep. resources, well, which I'm Obama's gonna, never cared about. I'm going to yep. add one other consideration then. Why don't we follow the state of Texas and Alaska and create a, uh, a, a, an American trust in which all of those <laughs> resources, when they're brought up, go to citizens. It's an idea. It's really been very frustrating think, looking Liz at just this. just dismiss me, by the way, Steve, there. It's an idea. She said. <laughs> it's really been very frustrating, though, to have this energy revolution take place in the United States and have our president basically dismiss it out of hand. No one, I mean, people don't understand. It could also be a geopolitical weapon. As we look at Russia, you if we're seriously concer concerned about Russia, Europe is dependent on Russia for natural gas. We could basically start taking that dependence yep. away by exports of LNG. There's all kinds of reasons why we should be fast and furiously developing every energy resource we have access to, That's when, including offshore. And, and, so and there, there, there's a great, there's a great book on this that just came out called Fueling Freedom, Exposing the Mad War on Energy, and it was written by me. Thank you so much <laughs> for mentioning it, Lou. I mean, it's a great stocking I'm, I'm just saying, I, I was stunned <laughs> into silence realizing what you were doing, and I'm thinking, who would do it better than Steve? Let him go. <laughs> Uh, and we say, do I mean, recommend Liz it, has by it right. the way. I mean, highly. Lou, Lou, I mean, Liz has it right. I mean, this is one of the most. And by the way, without the shale oil and gas revolution that's happened over the last 10 years in this country, I mean, this is the irony of the Obama presidency. We would not have had an economic recovery. The oil that's and exactly gas industry, right. which is the exact industry that he hates the most, is what right, they allowed. We want to get you both back, and okay. we're going to talk about the future and not the last 10 years. And because okay. I... There are eight it. years of it. But this I is really the don't particularly like to discuss in some detail. That's right. Steve Moore, always <laughs> love to talk with you. And We're we going highly to recommend Dow 30,000. Dow 30,000. And Liz Peak. <laughs> Thank you.